virgin most powerful radio sharing the gospel with clarity and charity i'm a soldier for christ i'm a soldier for christ i'm a soldier no they'll never take us under because we're bringing truth like thunder Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks Hold the cross high cause we'll cap those licks Fight the good fight with the truth Stand tall with the truth I'm a warrior for Christ I'm in love with the truth Love God, save souls, slay error Go stronger Welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. You might say, well, who's this young lady next to you? Well, it's Brenda Garcia. She's here for the Opus Angelorum uh, conference, the three-day retreat we here have, have at the chapel. And Brenda, welcome to the Terry and Jesse show. Thank you so much, Terry. This little girl, I call her a little girl because she's half my age or less, much less. <laughs> and she's on fire for the faith. And I said to her, Brenda, would you come in and tell your story? Because I know mom and dad are listening and they're going, I need a young person who loves Jesus and Mary to share their faith and to share their story. Well, you know, I wrote a book called How to Share Your Faith with Anyone. And I have a whole chapter on giving your testimony. So, Brenda, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank I you. am so honored to be here. It's such a privilege. It's mutual. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, by the grace of God yeah. and for his glory, I am a professional stunt woman by trade. What? Yeah. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah, so because I'm small in height, um, I stunt double for a lot of kids uh, or petite actors and mm -hmm. actresses who are around my height uh, for TV shows, movies, uh, commercials, video games, you name it. Really? It's Yeah, it's been a blessing. How many years have you been doing this? Eight years. Well, congratulations. Spread, yeah. So now that's what you do for a living. Mm -hmm. Now I want to understand a little bit about your background. Where did you come? Where did you grow up? Are you from Southern California? And then most importantly... Your faith is very strong in our Lord. I know that. And our Blessed Mother and the angels. Tell us a little bit about that. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I was born in Los Angeles, and I was raised in Los Angeles County my, my whole life. Wow. So I've been out here in, in California, Southern California, my whole life. And um, I was uh, born, born and raised Catholic, so mm -hmm. cradle Catholic. However, um, there was some uh, trying times in my life where my Faith was tested, of course, right? Normal. Like everybody else. Yeah. But in my particular case, how I came back to the faith, I guess I never really left the faith fully, mm -hmm. but I, I was tested and tried in so many ways where I felt very uh, tempted to try other things, and I was just very lost. Isn't the world very attractive in one sense? I mean, the, the, the glamour, especially coming from a Hollywood, yeah. I mean, Hollywood, did they say Hollywood? <laughs> but, you know, coming from that background, I, I got to just say, girl, I'm I like... You had to be tempted. Oh, yeah. So so tell us a little bit more about how your faith really brought you through tough times, too. Thank you. Okay, well, when I was questioning my faith, and, yes. okay, the reason why I questioned it so much was probably the same reason why a lot of people, because of suffering, Yeah. right? Of so course. for me, it was a severely, a very grave suffering that I, I thought was unfathomable for me. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a very sensitive spirit, and when I love, I love with all my entire heart, with my it's entire being. It's a good thing, being. girl. It's a very good thing, and until it bites you, but I'm not discouraging it. I encourage everybody to love with their whole selves. Um, but in my particular case, because of the lack of knowing, I didn't know better. I, I didn't know how to protect that yeah. through prudence and how to guard my heart course, better. And that was a life lesson, and so that's one thing I want to put out there is to, to learn a little bit about those cardinal virtues and, and theological virtues, which we'll get to hopefully. Absolutely. And uh, so guarding and protecting your heart as a young person, especially when dating. And in my particular case, I was in a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. I was actually engaged uh, to be married. Uh -huh. And um, that's where, you know, a, a lot of us suffer. But in this particular case, this is what led me to a lot of my seeking and questioning, which is a good thing. Um, so uh, when uh, we separated from that relationship, and I thank God for that. Yes. It wasn't meant to be, so I thank him and I trust mm -hmm. him. Um, I did a lot of soul searching and seeking for answers like, mm -hmm. okay, and um, that's when I was tested and tried and really was wondering, okay, how can a child of God actually suffer this bad to, to go through this type of betrayal and yeah. all the other things that go on with, with what suffering brings? 
And in my case, like I left the the only home I had. I, you know, the the only person I knew that I thought I was for sure had a forever with. Yeah. So a lot of things that were just like it just came out of nowhere. And when you put like a lot of your love and your trust in that, yes. like in the promises, then it's like okay, well then I don't know what to think anymore. Yeah. And so especially because I I was a very pray prayer for per person, but that was my prayers being answered. Was yeah. this isn't God's will for you? So. As you can't well, moved along as a young person, uh, many young people your age really don't know the faith very well. Right. Fair Duh, statement? Very fair yeah, statement. Duh, yeah. Yes. So here's my question. As you grew up as a Catholic, when was a, a turning point when you really realized that you needed to really study your faith deeply? So it was right when we basically separated. Mm -hmm. Like I, Like I said... Before we separated, actually, I was wondering why I didn't feel the same as far as like, okay, I my love and passion for the Lord is there, but his isn't. And I'm not trying to talk poorly no, about him. No, I have a, a lot of respect for this person, and I have no hard feelings against him. Good. So, and he knows that. So, Good. and so that's a very beautiful thing. Um, but I, it, he would also agree that this is true. That I, I needed us to grow in faith in the love of God of and uh, if that wasn't happening then we weren't happening yeah and that's how things happened and then when it happened which was a separation it was harder than I thought and um, it rocks your life oh yeah <laughs> especially as a young adult um, being with someone you know for like around six years plus that's a long time. is when you're young and you start at 19 oh, investing in a relationship it's like your young adult development so yes. that makes it really hard and so yeah, so right when we separated, I started to seek more answers because I was already going to daily mass starting in 2014. Awesome. Yeah. But of course, when we, you know, when the grounds got shaky and rocky, then I was like, oh man, what do I, I'm already doing all these things that are supposedly right and yeah. good. Yeah. So what's going on in this suffering? So that's where my questioning and seeking came. And um, I, I continued with daily mass, even though I was hurting. Mm -hmm. And I started to dive deeper into the Bible. And then I started looking for healing retreats and spiritual retreats and how to grow deeper in faith. Yes. And then I came across the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius. Oh, boy, at the top of the food chain. Okay, so I went to, through the 10-week program. Yes. And um, I also um, got involved with the Thomistic Institute. And <laughs> Fantastic! <laughs> yeah, so I was really, really <laughs> yeah. looking for heaven. And, and for those Earth. who don't know what Thomistic, that's St. Thomas Aquinas' school of theology, really. Continue. Amen. Yeah, so I really was like, I knew the devil was very much involved with chaos and disorder. Oh, I knew that. That's a good thing to know. Yes. And if anybody wonders why life is so miserable and so chaotic, well, misery and chaos comes from the devil. So you have that part already set. Yeah. So if you want to go the opposite way of that, you need to go towards God. Yeah. And so when you center yourself rightly towards God, towards the center, towards order, you will have better order and, and virtue. And that's excellence. That's your character. And that brings goodness and happiness and joy and peace. And that's what God has given me. Brenda, you're getting me all excited because <laughs> of your story of how you really are coming back to the faith through just traditional Catholicism. Really. Oh, it saved my life. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, what, what about when you were in college? How did that come about? And what was going on there that really challenged your faith? Yeah, so I ended up going to what I thought was a Catholic institution. Yeah. And, you know, no hard feelings about that place either. Yeah. But good. what I found was um, this was a little bit more liberal. Yeah. And um, I had a Muslim Islamic type of professor mm -hmm. who um, just kind of was persecuting me, really. I, I don't get that. I don't I, either. I mean, that just seems <laughs> crazy that here you are at a Catholic university in Los Angeles, and then the professor is, is from Muslim, and he's kind of putting you down as a Catholic? Yeah, so I, I, you know, I noticed that any time I prayed before, you know, and I'm thinking this is per. Uh, appropriate completely yeah. appropriate in a catholic school i shouldn't feel shame right. well, to just do a little prayer before yeah, my exam or just while i enter class of course. Or if it's 12 to do my angelus before class starts whatever awesome girl right yeah so i just felt this is the perfect place i can be catholic at a catholic sure. school sure and it, it, in that class with that professor um i would be i know I, i'd notice i'd get stared at and things like that and so some things went down in that sense and i ended up talking to the dean good and the dean helped straighten things out and i know my guardian angel was Thanks there be to god 
Yeah, and uh, everything just went wonderful after that. I graduated very wonderfully, and I finished I finished my program. So. Brenda, I'm going to shift gears because I know we're coming to an end of a segment. I just want to also mention you have a background in not just entertainment, you know, in the Hollywood, but you also did some radio uh, background too. Yeah. Can you share that with the folks? Just yeah, a little bit? absolutely. So I've always dreamed about like doing radio and TV as a kid, which You're is doing funny. It. I know. <laughs> so I ended up, um, you know, God made my dreams come true legitimately by the time I was a teenager. Wow. Which is really incredible. Yeah. I've always had my. The Lord has gi- uh, given me a uh, the gift of faith. Um, from since I was a little Thanks girl. Be to God. Yes, and I would love to tell you more about that story when, when the time is right. Yeah, let me just ask you this. We're talking to mom and dad listening, and they're saying, my son or my daughter is young, and they're struggling in life right now. Mm-hmm. How do you, what suggestions would you have for a young person today when they're in a world that acts like God doesn't exist, mm. and they're just kind of going along to get along, and um, how do we introduce them to the person of Christ. Thank you for that question. You know, in St. Sa- uh, Augustine talks about how when someone's suffering and they're looking for mm-hmm. the pleasures to help them feel better, it's really God that they're looking for. They're looking for God in all these empty things and vanities. Um, so if we can just remember that, and I know it's harder sometimes for mom and dad to relay this to their kids because the last thing the kids want to listen to is mom and dad. They want to listen to their friends right. and peers. So that's why it's important to have young people and peers be that person of encouragement and that person of God to really Lay that beautiful message to them of hope, to show them that we have a promise for tomorrow. We have a reason for awesome. living. I'm here with Brenda Garcia, young, pretty little girl who I call I'm, I'm not a movie star, but she works in the movie industry. Okay, and but she loves Jesus and Mary, and she loves the church. Amen. And we're going to talk more about how you can fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ and His Bride, the Church, right after a quick break on the Terry and Jesse Show. Don't turn that dial. Welcome, Daniel. You're on the line. What's on your mind, brother? Hi, I just wanted to share a testimony about Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I had a buddy at work who, you know, he's a lukewarm Catholic guy, and I wanted him to start listening to the Terry and Jesse show, so I kept telling him to download the app, and he kept putting me off. So one day, I grabbed his phone, and I downloaded the app (laughs) for him. I went on vacation, and you know, I kept telling him to listen to it. He was kind of put me off. I came back from vacation. He comes to my cubicle, and he says to me, Hey, man, I've been listening to Terry and Jesse's show, and it's great. And it's uh, made a big impact in his life. The guy, he's going to weekly adoration a couple times a wow. week. He goes to the Mass in the morning. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he's an on-fire Catholic, and he promotes the Terry and Jesse show on the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Daniel, what a testimony, and I want to encourage our listeners to get those cards by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and uh, do what Daniel's doing. Go out and spread the faith by inviting people to listen to Virgin Most Powerful. Daniel, thanks for your testimony, brother. God love you. You're welcome. If you shop on Amazon.com, there's an easy way to support Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Just visit smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center under the desired charity. Now, when you log into your Amazon account and purchase products, a portion of it will automatically go to support Virgin Most Powerful Radio at no cost to you. Thanks in advance for supporting CRC and VMPR, and may God richly bless you and your family. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888 526 2151. Now, 
Here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to this special edition with Brenda Garcia. I always say, Brenda, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm too, too anointed. anointed to be disappointed. And, and if hope was money, I'd be a millionaire. She, she, <laughs> she's a listener of the Terry and Jesse show. Brenda, I love it. I'm excited having you here because the first segment we talked about your own background. And now I'd like to kind of shift into another area. And that is helping young people fall in love with Jesus and Mary and his bride, the church. What, what do we need to do to give young people... Uh, a reason to really fall in love with God. You know, if if we ever have any questions in life, or we, if we ever have any uncertainties, which mm -hmm. we all do, of course. The question is, why wouldn't we go to the most certain place? That's but that's the problem. A lot of people don't know that they are the absolute truth and the certainty, and that's why we need to get this message out there. Yeah. Is because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen, sister. Yes, and so if we can, uh, if young people can know that, yeah. then they'll have every reason to go to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, yes. and everything will start to make more sense. And guess what? We live in an age of anxiety and depression. Yeah, that's true. I mean. Um, I think it's Pew Research shows yep. that the higher our, um, the more that people stop going to church, right? Yeah. Those the rates that they yeah. decline, they decrease. Yep. The higher the levels of anxiety and depression. That's a fact. That's an actual fact by science and research. So, um, what does that tell us? Yeah, we and need God. We need faith. We yeah. need God. Amen. So, don't we want to? Don't we not want to live in that? We want. Mm -hmm. We we don't want anxiety and depression. Now, Brenda, you spoke to, I think, 25,000 young people at some event. Can you share what the setting was and what was your message to the young people? Thank you. It was similar to this, by the grace of God. It's just, why should we love Jesus? Why why look for him? And how can people find him? And um, this was in Mexico. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it was an international talk in Spanish, and it was beautiful. And honestly... Um, the, the truth behind a lot of that is a lot of us young people are very distracted. We can't let go of our phones. It's the truth. It's just like, and then if we find an excuse to let go, we find a reason to, to get back to the phone. Oh, well, because I have an email or a phone call to make. And it, anything to bring us back to the social media and distractions. When, you know, I found that a more ascetic type of lifestyle, which means kind of monastic, kind of mm -hmm. more... Um, you know, old school, mm -hmm. just kind of forgetting about the phone for a little bit will really refresh you. So I used a line today on the Terry and Jesse show earlier that God speaks when we're silent. Amen. And so that that is really true. So he, you can't hear God if you're talking all the time. Nope. Or if you're distracted all the yeah, time. You're distracted. And so this talk you gave to these young people, what did you challenge them with? Oh, that, that's particularly just that precisely just that was how can we learn how to go about without being so addicted to our devices and mm. social media because look social media was a big topic because a lot of us have social media and i'm not condemning it because mm. they're you, you could be used for good things sure. too right sure. but most people aren't using it for good things it's mostly to kind of just you know waste our time or you know it's kind of like the new baseball it's our new pastime yeah. scrolling yeah. i get it and honestly, it doesn't edify us. It actually does the opposite. Yeah. A lot of people, as I have my MA in counseling psychology. Wow. And um, a lot of people have found and have shared with me that social media brings them down. And I would say, okay, why? I felt like I knew why, and this was exactly what they told me. Well, all it does is it makes me angry because I'm seeing all these nice toys that people have. They have these nice cars, these nice careers, these nice boyfriends and girlfriends. All these things that I don't have. And it's like... Okay, so there's a lot of comparison and then a lot of envy and a lot of things that makes people feel less than and unfulfilled. So do young people vicariously live a life on the Internet that's, you know, a fake life? Yes. And feel like, you know, they'll tell people things about where they went or when it's not really true, but it, they, they have to kind of like compete with what is out there. Is that a fair statement? That's a very fair statement, yes. Unfortunately, it's a very superficial platform where we post only the, the very best of whatever we think is part of us, yeah. and it brings about a lot of insecurity and challenges. Brenda, I'm going to ask you something now. That I'm going to embarrass you a little. That's okay. So, uh -oh. <laughs> and that is, young people look at, you know, image and all that, you know, like they, oh, you've got to be 
uh, pretty, you got to be handsome, you got to be X, Y, Z, you know, uh, this kind of making this kind of money, and that's what you're, that defines you. So I want to ask you, uh, what do you tell young people what should define them? In other words, where do they find their true happiness uh, outside of what the world is telling them? Where do they get their dignity from? Thank you. Well, not to sound cliche in any way, but Jesus Christ alone mm -hmm. through God. Yeah. Because a lot of people, like you said, unfortunately, unless they have an X amount of money or an X amount of good looks, yeah. they're not really happy until mm -hmm. that happens. And that's unfortunate because most people believe that that's true. So I want you to tell the young girls, because you're a young girl, mm -hmm. that many of them I've counseled, and not a counselor, but people ask me all kinds oh, of right. questions. That is good. And they're they feel bad because they don't look like the model that's in the magazine, the teen magazine or whatever they shouldn't be reading anyway because it's garbage, but they feel depressed because they don't think they're pretty, which mm. I look at them and I tell them, you're pretty because God doesn't make junk. No. And, and you're just, you have to look at yourself and God, you know, what, what God made you a certain way, whether you're a male or female, everything is been defined by God and that if God stopped thinking about you, you would cease to exist and he loves you. So how do we instill the love of God in people who uh, somehow get mixed up in what the world looks right. as being successful? Thank you for that. You know, one of the things I said in my talk was, mm -hmm. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting. I love it. <laughs> but, the, I love it. And, but I said, but the man or woman who yeah. fears the Lord is yeah. to be praised. Because it says the, uh, the woman who fears the Lord is to be yeah. praised. But I said, you know what, boys, this goes for you too. Mm -hmm. Because um, you are a timeless, beautiful person if you are grounded and founded in your faith. Mm -hmm. And really, the beauty is from within. If yeah. you are so beautiful yeah. from the inside, you have no idea how that translates to the outside. I mean, people forget. I mean, no one really looks at the outside of your inside is irradiating with glory and purity and goodness. It really does something. Awesome, Brendan. I just want to mention something. If your vocation is to be married, like my wife and I were married, and after 30-some years, I look at my wife, and I think she's more beautiful than the day. And she is. And she is. But, I mean, then I, when I married her, she got prettier. And here's the thing, folks. Because of my love for her exclusively, that I am married to her, and that commitment is for life. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. I think young people are really searching for that kind of a commitment in a world that says, I'm going to use you just until I don't need you anymore. Mm. And isn't it attracting to see the beautiful teachings of the Catholic faith? Uh, I look at Fulton Sheen's book, Three to Get Married, You, Your Wife, and God. And I just want to make a pitch out for the young people that when you see... If that's your calling to be, get married, to really look at Fulton Sheen's book, Three to Get Married, I, as a resource so that when you do marry, you have it, you have it, a, a vision of marriage that's by God's uh, design, not your design. And also, just a quick note, my thought, and I'll let you comment on it, religious life. If a young person is thinking that they're being called to be a bride of Christ or to be a, a, a monk or a priest that uh, understanding that giving yourself to Christ and then saying, not my will, but your will, is what really brings peace in our life. Amen. Comment. Yes, amen to that. Just like our Blessed Mother, you mm. know, and I went to World Youth Day you in Panama. Did? Yes. Wow. I am so glad I did. And our main message, the theme of World Youth Day was what our Blessed Mother said in her fiat, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according yes. to thy word. And honestly, if any of all of us can live that way, man or woman, it's not just limited to women or handmaidens. No. If we all can say, Lord, I am your son or daughter, mm -hmm. be it done to me according yeah. to your word, yes. we'll have so much more peace. That's the message I give to not just young people, but to everyone. Everybody. You know, there's a song they sing in hell. I did it my way. <laughs> and there's a song they sing in heaven. I did it his, his way. way. Frank Sinatra, you know. But the point of it is, Brenda, is when you give yourself to Christ through Mary, I might add, mm. Louis de Montfort, yes. St. Maximilian Colby, I know in my life, that's when my life really got really uh, involved in falling deeper in love with Jesus. And God just used me in so many special ways because I'm no special person. 
uh, in the sense of an individual, but God will take the weak to confound the strong. That's mm. a biblical teaching. Mm. And so I, I would just encourage young people mm. to give themselves to Christ through Mary and say, whatever God's will is, I want to do it. Because as Pierre de Cassade's book, Abandonment to Divine Providence, says, God's will is manifested moment by moment as long as you're staying faithful to your duties in your state in life. Yeah. And with that message, your state in life, if you're you're going to school, you're, what is your duty? And that's how you sanctify your vocation. And even, I'll just take it to the next level, and you, you correct me or give me your thoughts. I find that doing God's will by my marriage and serving my wife even a little cup of water that I've given to her every morning for 30 some years, I give that cup of water and I say, Mary Danielle, I give this cup of water with love and devotion for you. Yes, and you see that pleases not only her, so cute. it pleases God <laughs> because I can serve her. Oh, and you see, when you serve, that's when your happiness comes. It really and, is. And, and Brenda, tell me I'm all wet, but the world is telling young people Serve it's themselves. all about me. Am I onto something? Guys, honestly, yeah. our culture is so upside down. Mm. Uh, our culture is feeding us pure lies. I mean, we, it, I mean, you can just see it mm. every day. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, if we if we don't see it, then you're blind to it, yeah. and you're you're being led by a blind person, right? And the gospel tells us, don't you both oh, fall into it, a pit? Yeah, that's it. So. This is the place where people will wake up and find happiness. Mm -hmm. And honestly, this isn't like, oh, we're being told what to do because a lot of people think it's all about following rules and yeah. I won't mm -hmm. have fun. Come on, I've never been so free in my life. Yeah. And I, um, it, for those who know me, know I'm, I'm a very joyful person, very happy and very tell. much at peace. <laughs> I can tell. So I want to share that with everybody. And I know the Lord has blessed me and privileged me to be here in all the places that he sent me for that reason. Um, so. Well, Brenda, I just got a quote from St. J uh, John Paul II. He gave this quote uh, back ah. in October of 1995. He says, freedom consists not in doing what we like, but in having the right to do what, what we, we ought. ought. Have young, if young people were taught that, don't you think that would help them really realize what's important and what's not important in life? Absolutely. Um, uh, G.K. Chesterton, a different author, he, oh, yeah. he has a similar quote, um, yep. um, and I don't know it by heart, okay. but it's all about doing what we ought. Like, he gives the analogy of playing on a, on a baseball field or, yep. or the like, where it wouldn't be fun if you were just a chaotic person playing by your own rules. If It's fun because you play within the rules, within the playground. Hey, and you what? nailed it, girl. G.K. <laughs> Chesterton, he said this, common sense ain't that common. Here at the Terry and Jesse Show, it sure is. I'm here with Brenda Garcia talking about her love for Jesus and Mary. We'll be right back with more to inspire you to fall in love with Jesus. Help the Helpless, a Minnesota St. Paul nonprofit organization chaired by Father of Tear and volunteers, is humbly asking you for your kind support to help the poor and the handicapped children in India and Ecuador. Through financial support from the help of the helpless benefactors, the children are provided with clothing, food, education, shelter, and the teachings of the Catholic Church. The mission is to help children thrive and become self-sufficient young adults leading productive lives. We also provide aid to poor families in Ecuador with food baskets, medicines, medical assistance, and help with funeral needs for the deceased. The work in India is done by Father Antonio's organization, St. Mary's. In Ecuador, the work is being done by the Servant Sisters of the Home of Mother. You can call us at 877-762-8857. To learn more, please visit our website, www.help.com. TheHelpless.org. God bless you. Jesus said in Matthew 26, Stay awake and pray that you may not enter into temptation. According to St. Ephraim, Jesus, who feared nothing, experienced fear and asked to be freed from death, although he knew it was impossible. How much more must we persevere in prayer before temptation assails us? 
so that we may be freed when the test has come. May God grant that we may withstand temptation and carry out His will in all things. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. Jesse's out of town this Friday, but I have my new friend, Brenda Garcia here telling you, her Jesus. story. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Brenda, are we having fun yet? I love it. So do I. <laughs> and, and you know what? I hope you're having fun to hear her story of how she loves Jesus and Mary. And Brenda, I'd like to ask you, uh, because mom and dad are listening, and we all have our adult, young adults that we have, and we're trying to encourage them to, you know, to stay within the faith and to really love the Lord. And one of the characteristics that came in your life was consecration to uh, Jesus through Mary. Can That's you share right. a little bit of that? Yeah, sure. So after the, the rough time I went through, as you guys yeah. know, yep. um, of course, I was like, how can I go deeper with yeah. my God? And I yeah. didn't know any other way to go deeper. And thank God for these wonderful Catholic communities that really care yeah. and cared about me and care about all of us. Yeah. They're like, try consecrating yourself to Jesus through mm-hmm. Mary. I go, what in the world What's is that? that? Yeah. What? <laughs> I said, I, whatever that means, I want that. Because... Who else was closer to exactly. Jesus than Mary? Exactly. And so I was like, wow, this is a chance for me to build a better relationship with Mary, mm-hmm. which before then I wasn't as, you know, sure. it wasn't as developed. And I didn't know her hidden power as well as I do now. And if anybody wants to go deeper with the Lord or even to uh, through with our mother, yeah consecrate yourselves i highly recommend it to jesus through mary um, um there's a book through by saint louis de montfort right. consecration to jesus through That's mary right. and um some churches actually participate in it and we did our consecration day on the feast of the immaculate conception what a great day december yes. 8th december 8th yeah wow yeah good job young yeah. lady <laughs> so mom and dad listening i always think of you and i see this young beautiful girl who you know, has had a life in Hollywood where she's a stunt girl and now she's um, been there for years and she's deep, spending time now deepening her faith and learning more about her faith. And I just want to ask, how how in the world are the, you know, you're at this angel three-day retreat here at the Sacred Heart Chapel. Tell us about your love for the angels and how, how the, I always joke and I say the unemployment rate for guardian angels is way too high. Put them to work. <laughs> so tell me about your love for your angel. Thank you. Yes. So in addition to consecrating myself to Jesus through Mary yes. back in 2017 for the first time, yes. I earlier this year in March um, on St. Joseph's Feast Day, um, I consecrated myself to Jesus through St. Joseph. Good for you. Um, Father Don Calloway's book. Oh, great book. Highly recommend it. You bet. And then guess what? Tell me. Oh, my guardian angel is still working for me, you know, hasn't given up on me, thankfully. Good. (laughs) Um, And um, I came across Opus Sanctorum Angelorum, which is why I'm here through for you know for the retreat that I've been participating in and the conferences. Can we make a little joke about that? You called me about a week ago. (laughs) And now I remember you called me and said, my name is Brenda. A friend of mine told me about the conference. I'm, you know, I, I just wanted to check and see what's going on. I said, oh, yeah, young lady, come on. Uh, and um, I didn't know you from Adam, uh, but um, you you came, and then you said, and I said to you, I think I say, I say it to everybody, I want to make sure you come and say hello to me. I'm the bald-headed old man. I say that to everybody. <laughs> and now you're here, and we're being, you're being interviewed on <laughs> Look the at Terry that. and Jesse that's, show. That's our guardian angel see? at work. Honestly, yeah. this is truly how God works. That's and right. he uses his angels to bring people together. That's right. And because, you know, 
our guardian angels, they have a very important role in our lives. Tell and me. look, honestly, I didn't know. This is all up seeking. But we have to do our part as children of God. You know, you don't just kind of wait around, hope and pray that something will happen. Yes, you hope and pray, but you also you not only have to be receptive of God's grace, but cooperative with God's That's right. grace. You nailed it. Yes. So I, because I know that, I know I have to do something on my part. So when I did that talk, that where, yes, where there Mexico. was more than 20,000 people. Wow. Um, um, I had a phone call that came out of nowhere. It was private on the day of my talk, like within 40 minutes before my talk began. Oh, my goodness. And I was like, I don't have time for this, this phone call, no. you know? And so I just, you know, I didn't push the off button. I just pushed the mute button on the side so the phone doesn't ring so I can continue, you know, praying sure. and just practicing my notes for my upcoming talk. And something told me you should answer that and of course that was god through my guardian angel mm -hmm. telling me you should just take that call okay. and i was like what yeah, okay. a, a private call okay so i took the call and it was a, a person from ewtn really yes <laughs> and they're they were just basically talking about my my role as a media missionary you know being involved updating my information and i was like okay great you know you know got, got to get going back to the talk sure. i didn't say that yeah. but you know sure um, but before we hung up, she goes, uh, by the way, before I let you go, is there anything that you'd like me to pray for for you? I That's go, nice. well, yes, actually, I have a talk coming up in a few minutes. I'd really appreciate your prayers. Good. And she's like, sure, within the next 15 minutes, the Franciscan Friars and everybody at EWTN will have your prayers. And I was yep. like, wow. Okay, thank you, Lord. I was like, I appreciate that so much. She That's goes, you powerful. know, she's like, That's your guardian angel work for you. I was like, how does this lady know this? She goes, have you not heard of Opus Sanctorum? Oh, you got to be kidding. That's what happened. And I that's did, why I'm here. <laughs> I did not know that. Yes. <laughs> so thank you, Guardian thank you, Angel. Jesus. Exactly. Yes. And, and I want to ask, Brenda, also, mm -hmm. and I think we're coming to a break in a minute here, mm -hmm. but I want to ask about how the angels have helped you have a great love for Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Thank you. Because, you know, we, we see the message of Fatima, Mm -hmm. and how the angels taught us how to adore Jesus in the Eucharist. And I know you have a great love for the Blessed Sacrament because of the days you've been here, you've been praying before Jesus, and I can see you've got great peace before our Eucharistic King. How could you instill this love for the Eucharist with our angel to help young people spend that time before the Blessed Sacrament? Because I, I encourage young people at least once a week, at least, to make a holy hour and just ask Jesus, what do you want me to do? Wow. But tell me your thoughts about your love for the Blessed Sacrament with the angels. Thank you. Honestly, um, this has taken some time because, mm -hmm. like I mentioned before, I didn't know about these relationships sure. so much. I just thought it was all, you know, it is all about Jesus. But he has, he works in a family. Exactly. He's a holy trinity. You there's a Father, it. Son, Holy Spirit. There's a holy family. And then there's a... Um, choirs of <laughs> angels. Exactly, girl. You, I had you no idea. It. Like, well, I knew that, but mm. I didn't know that they're meant to be used for to help us yeah. to get to heaven. Yeah. And guys, invoke your guardian angel. Your guardian angel, invoke our blessed mother. Mm -hmm. They are powerful. And you just ask it, especially if it's for his glory. If it glorifies him and helps you, he will give it to you. And um, what what I desired was, Lord, I want to get to know you better. I want your peace and that love that you promised because I was so overburdened just being so worldly. Yeah. And mom and dad and brothers and sisters out there listening, if you know what it's like to work and make a paycheck, you might know what it's like to feel exhausted. And I've been through burnout before. Really? Yes. And I so invoking, you know, asking God for the grace to help me. Um, through whatever graces and help he has sent, you know, he has, he has inspired me to get to know my guardian angel better to help me. Tell us a little bit about your formation now uh, uh, regarding making a consecration to your guardian angel. Are you uh, going to be doing that in the future? Yes. Yeah. So thank goodness for that call, right? Thank you, Lord, um, mm -hmm. that that call came through because all of that has led me to the retreat that has brought me here where the retreat is. Mm -hmm. And um, I am now in formation, consecrating myself to my holy guardian angel. Mm. And if God so wills it, I will continue to a second year of formation to consecrate myself to the whole choir of angels, rather than just the guardian angel, but all the choirs of the holy angels. And just to let her know, she doesn't know this, but about 30 years ago, in the late uh, 1970s, that's when I started my formation for the angels with the Opus Angelorum. Really? When I was a 
young wow. male. So 30, 40 years ago, I guess. Wow. And so now I've consecrated myself and also to all the angels. And I look at it as I need the angels' help to be faithful to Jesus mm-hmm. and his bride, the church. And I need all the help I can get. And I would just encourage you to look into this because yes, we all need help. We, we can't have this mentality of individualism like no. pulling our Ooh. bootstraps up. that no. was me that really? was oh that was me that was me um well you know uh, i was always raised to you know believe oh one day you will be an independent woman where you won't depend on anybody and you know that's a good thing i wow. guess to an extent yeah and then uh but no you need god in everything yes. i mean not i wasn't being told that you don't need god i yeah. i was always encouraged god but I, you know, to when you're young, sometimes you you feel like you're so invincible that you just don't need anything. I, I always felt like I needed God. Yeah. But when you go through times of trial and things and you feel a little more distant and sometimes you're in desolation, you just feel like you have nothing. And so you can feel your weakness more. And so I felt like, well, that independence and that, that so-called strength that I thought I had, I really don't have that. And so that's when I said, I need my family. And that's the holy family. And that's the angels. You know, Brenda, when you were talking about like that, you were telling me that it made me think about how the world forms us on mm-hmm. individualism mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and says it's all about me. Mm-mm-mm. And that has gotten people into a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I would even say this. This is just my take for young people, that the happiness you're looking for is in all the wrong places mm-hmm. because the world, the devil, and the flesh is going to tell you, oh, if only you could make this money, only if you had this house, only if you were having this job, and then you get there and you go, and then what? Mm-hmm. And so I want to help you solve that problem ahead of time because I can save you a lot of pain. Yes, and uh, I'm a testimony to that because I know what it's like to have made a lot, a lot of money, mm-hmm. to have a really, really, really big house mm-hmm. and a lot of um, big name cars. Wow. I know what it's like to have riches and wealth. And I'll tell you that it's, you know, it's not the answer and it's definitely emptiness. Even though, you know, God can bless you and your gifts on, in, in, on, you know, in this world. But it's not the place for happiness is what we're getting to. Brenda, this is so important for young people because young people think if only I was making that money, I could go out and buy a, a, a fancy car. Mm-hmm. See, you've been there, done that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think about that. To, you're telling young people, don't do it. I've been there. I've done that. Mm-hmm. My true happiness is finding it in Jesus and his bride, the church. We're going to take a quick break. In our last segment, I'm going to ask Brenda Garcia to talk a little bit more about the Eucharist and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament and taking time to be quiet in a very, very noisy world. Thank you. I always like to say we're too blessed. To be here, you are doing it to be disappointed. And if hope was money, we'd be a billionaire, spiritually billionaire. We'll be right back with more with Brenda Garcia, my guest on the Terry and Jesse Show. We got Ernesto from Long Beach. You know, I just wanted to comment, you know, and I just wanted to thank you guys. And I kind of wanted to encourage people that are listening, maybe that are not donating, you know, because honestly, I got to be honest. I used to think you guys were a little too over the top, you know, (laughs) you know, yeah, that's right. If God gave us a lot, you know, and I'm, I have the blessing of listening to all this. I just want to call all the people, you know, I've got five kids, you know, and I don't make a lot of money and I'm still donating to you guys. God bless you, brother. You're amazing. We gotta, we have to do this. We have to do the extra. And it's not even the extra. People see it like it's extra. Kneeling for communion, saying your rosary, saying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. It is not extra. It's what the church tells us to do. Amen. You're a good man, brother. 30 years old, 29 years old, five kids, and I thank you guys for everything. I love it. Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before. 
at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Mary Ann Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the keyword pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-Life Across America, the Billboard People. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Actually, Jesse's out of town this Friday. I am here with Brenda Garcia, and I'm having a good time. I hope you are, too. And Brenda, I love your story. Now, just for those who just tuned in, you're going to have to turn the podcast back and listen to the whole show again, because this young lady has had success in the world as a stunt woman. Uh, you know, can I just, is it okay for me to tell you, tell the people some of the movies that you've played in that are, uh, Absolutely. That, you know, tell us a little bit about that and then I want to get into some serious matters. Yeah, no problem. Um, by the grace of God and for his glory, he has, you know, blessed me with this career. Some of the movies I have uh, worked on mm -hmm. um, include like Bird Box with Sandra Bullock, mm -hmm. um, uh, tra uh, um, Transformers, The Dark Knight with... That's um, the last night with um, Mark Wahlberg, um, uh, Marvel's Ant Man and the Wasp, uh, Avatar Two. Wow! Yeah, Baywatch with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. All these names. Well, I'm just... impressed. <laughs> so, Chris, to be honest with you, none of those names mean anything to me because I don't watch TV. Oh, I don't okay. watch it on there you go. He's got the aesthetic. Yeah, I am pretty good. But Brenda, thank you for setting that stage because you've really had some worldly success. Mm -hmm. Now I want to ask you. Uh, to share, and it's very intimate, about your St. Francis of Assisi moment in your life because most people would say, gosh, girl, you know what they would say right now? Hey, can you set me up with her? She's, I mean, <laughs> she's like, you know, that's what they would say. And I'm laughing when I say it, but I mean, you've had success. They want to be around successful people. Mm -hmm. But tell us your St. Francis of Assisi moment. Thank you. Well, that this is this happened after um, my ex and I separated. Yes. I was so empty inside, as I mentioned, my yeah. depression and desolation. Of so course, there's a, a lot more to the story, but I'm going to just briefly summarize yeah. it for you guys Got just it. so you get the, the gist of it. I was so empty um, that I just wanted to fill that void. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I felt kind of distant from God. I never really fully left him, but I was I felt so far that I, I was looking for him in the wrong places, as, as I mentioned. Were you kind of numb? Yes. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. Numb to like, you just said, like, I'm lost. Yes. And I think so that relates to people. Absolutely. And I was so lost, so not sure of what who I like what's going on that I was like, you know, I need to fill this void yeah. and I need to get the biggest house I can get. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well that I could afford. Did it. <laughs> and I, you did I got it. A, a huge house. Yeah. I got, you know, several cars and oh very God. nice name name brand cars and you know, I just thought, you know, if I get this gigantic thing, I'm gonna it's gonna fill that what and, I'm And what happened? I had a Francis of Assisi moment. I love it. <laughs> you mean those things didn't really get you so excited and happy? You mean they, well, tell us what happened. Yeah, so I thought they were going to make me happy. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, if I get this thing, this is the best revenge. Like, you know, yeah. everybody wants what I have. Yeah, I bet. And then, I, you know, anyway. Sure. Um, you should. You need a nice place to be safe in. Go ahead. Yeah, but my point is, like, I had that Francis of Assisi moment. Mm -hmm. And, excuse me. Sorry. And um, <laughs> And one day, when I was still very depressed and in desolation, yeah. I remember just driving back home to my new house, and it was, like, pretty, you know, I was still just moving in and stuff, and I was like, wow. I am you, so empty. You lived alone <laughs> in a big house. 
Yeah, at the time, by oh myself. My gosh. Yeah, at the time, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, thanks be to God. Yeah, yeah. and it's all not healthy. Like, oh no, oh no. But you know, this is the mentality. This is it's like, oh, you know, I this is what I went through, and this is what I think I need. Even though I knew I needed God, but it, it was a strange time in my life, yes. unfortunately. No, I can see that. Unfortunately. Hey, guys, this is a testimony, and I'm sharing how thank God you. has saved me. Thank, thank you, Brenda, for sharing such a, a powerful experience in your life because so many of us right now listening are going, only if I could have that big house. And here you are telling us it's not all that what mm-hmm. it's up to be oh no that's a, like i said that francis of assisi moment came where i i see it and you know i you know i know i thanked god for it because there's a story behind that too but anyway um but i the point was what i what i thought was going to make me happy having this big beautiful house and you know the things that i've been blessed with is not the answer right that's what we're getting to and i just said i need to empty myself of all things worldly, period. Wow. So what did you do? And that was my Francis of Assisi moment. I just kind of um, just left everything that I had and really? went to take some time to be just, with the Lord. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And, and talking about time with the Lord, again, going back to what we Christian Catholics call the source and summit of our Catholic faith, the Holy Eucharist, what brought you to uh, be close to Jesus. Was there a peace being in His presence before the Blessed Sacrament? Yeah, honestly, I think the um, all the Holy Heavenly Family was helping get mm-hmm. me, to get me there. Yeah, because um, I knew I know I needed that divine assistance to help guide me, mm-hmm. and I believe the work of my Holy Guardian Angel and our Blessed Mother were there because yeah. I had already consecrated myself. Good. This this all happened the same year I got the house, everything, right? Wow. Yeah, so I ended up consecrating myself later that year. Because I went through that Francis of Assisi moment, which is a whole longer story than that. Yeah. Um, but basically, um, I, 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 I went to spend some time with the Lord, mm-hmm. and I had a very intimate moment with the Lord. That's powerful. Yes. Was it a time where you were silent? Did you just Absolutely listen? silent. Wasn't that, it was that critical in your story? Oh, yeah. It was very much silent. Well... Um, there's a Benedictine monastery, right, you know, very close to where I live. So if there's a monastery near you guys, please take advantage of that to spend time in silence with God. And I really wanted to just stop with the noise because noise is a huge distraction. You really, you you know, you, God can't talk to you and you can't listen to God mm-hmm. if you have so much noise in between you and God. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I need to stop everything I'm doing and just go and be with God. So I was silent and I heard him talk to me. And um, I felt his embrace, and I got the peace in everything I've ever wanted in my life, in, in things that money can't buy. Brenda, also, isn't it fair to say, now that you're, you're, you really are intimately in love with God in your life that you hadn't had before, that your relationships with individuals, whether it's uh, men, women, anyone that you meet, like, hasn't that changed how you... Uh, communicate with people. In other words, your sincerity, your, 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 um, just how you operate. In other words, like for example, I meet you. I see you as a sister in Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, because of your baptism, because your love for God, and doesn't that just put a new perspective on life when you meet other fellow Christians and Catholics who love Jesus and Mary? Doesn't that just stoke your fire also? It does. It really does. Amen. It's a it's a blessing to be able to see and meet people yeah. who aren't judging you for what you have, what you're wearing, exactly. what you're driving. It's like so refreshing yeah. because, and you know, n- no offense to the whole world out there because the world operates on worldly things apparently, but <laughs> it's really nice to just see the person for who they are yeah. and the dignity that they have of God's image in them. And it's so, like, wow, that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, and so as you meet people now with the faith, would you, would you, would you encourage people to just associate? In other words, St. John Bosco said, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Wow, yes. So now your life as being intimately in love with God, are you building relationships with people who are on the same page? And do you think that's really important for the people who are listening right now that they should, as Don Bosco says, have friends with the same values, you know, love of God 
Isn't that an important aspect of your life now? Absolutely. Yeah. So I would highly encourage all, all the young people mm -hmm. to find these types of virtuous friends, especially mm -hmm. virtuous friendships, yes. oh, which yeah. are hard to find. They really are. That's why I was doing as much seeking as I was, because I knew that not only could I would I be able to make it in this world alone, yeah. especially without God, but if I don't have some sort of good community, it's going to be a rough, a rough one for me. You know, I picked up on that on young people and they're searching for relationships. Yes, they are. But authentic relationships, mm -hmm. not fake ones. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair statement? Yes. And so again, how do we encourage young people, uh, for example, uh, to you know, have that relationship with Christ? Are we talking about young adult uh, groups? Are we talking about getting online? Do you have any recommendations of groups that they would that you would recommend that touched you? Yes, absolutely. Good. Thank I you for that. You <laughs> yeah, so my searching led me first to a young adult group Good. in North Hollywood called The Vine. The Vine. Never yes. Heard of it. Um God is the vine and we are the branches. Oh, I love it. Yes. And um so they are very much on fire for the Lord and they're mm -hmm. about all growing and, and gaining spiritual maturity. Good. So they will challenge you and that was a beautiful thing. And from there I've since gone to Opus Day. And I've wow. become a cooperator. Um, Congratulations. Thank you very much. And so now I, you know, I go there for my um, biweekly recollection and monthly gatherings and uh, monthly spiritual direction. Man, you're serious, girl. Oh, yeah. Hey, we need that. No. <laughs> we do. We need more young adults, definitely, this, you know, highly involved in the faith. Brenda, how do you see some of the old guys like us and Jesse that have been doing this for, you know, 30, 40 years of of just trying to share the gospel, um, is is it, how can we as older guys, especially us, reach out to young people like you? In other words, just by being ourselves with you? Or what, what, what's, the, what's the attraction for some of the older guys and women that are evangelizing? What, what can we do to offer, you know, our love for God to you young people? Thank you. The funny thing is you guys think you're so old and whatnot. <laughs> Maybe biologically you think that, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm thinking, wow, the, Terry and Jesse, they have such young hearts. Yeah. Um, when you love the Lord yeah. and you're on fire for God, it really rejuvenizes It does. Us. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Brenda, I got to just say this, that uh, I want to thank you for sharing yeah. such intimate thoughts about your own life. Because if any good comes from this, it comes from God, and we thank Him for it. Amen. But I want to make one more summary before we have to go on this hour. It went by very, very fast. And if I have, I like action items. Mm -hmm. What action items would you give to a young person today to help build their Catholic faith? Thank you. Um, a few things. Um, first and foremost, prayer. Mm -hmm. Beg God for the grace of prayer, mm -hmm. like to help you go deeper, to get to know God better, um, to help you invoke your guardian angel, mm -hmm. um, and to... Um, really help guide you to a good community so you could uh, find some good virtuous friends that will help challenge you and lead you closer to god and ultimately to heaven great advice from brenda garcia my new friend in the lord i love <laughs> it hey i want to thank all of you who are listening to virgin most powerful i want to encourage you to consider being a monthly donor here because we give you all kinds of material like dr scott Hahn, fulton sheen father bill casey Dr. Michael Barber, Tim Staples, lots of things I've been doing for 30 years go back to you. Call 877-526-2151 to find out about that or go online to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. I'm going to ask you one more question. Brenda, what state should you be living in? What state? The state of grace. She got it. <laughs> She's a listener, I can tell. Hey, I want to remind you, Our Lady of Fatima said souls are going to hell because no one's there to pray and make sacrifices. It's Friday. A little penance is good for the soul. I want to thank you again for listening. Tell your friends about the Terry and Jesse show, about Virgin Most Powerful. We get thousands of new listeners every week because of you, and I want to just personally thank you for your zeal in spreading the Catholic faith. Full sheen ahead at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests Oh my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, grant it love, and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. 
thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin most powerful, pray for us.